Yes guys, what's going on? Welcome to Adam McCola TV. We are back for another MUFC Rumour Rater, the place where we put all the latest transfer rumours in the past week through the Rumour Rater and see whether there's any truth or whether they're all full of bullshit. We'll be doing that today. So make sure throughout the show, as we discuss all the rumours, talking Chris Smalling, Jaden Sancho, Euros Ratic, Sergio Reguilon, Gareth Bale, and loads of other things, make sure you're getting your rumour ratings in those comments below as we go through. And of course, we are on that race to 100,000 subscribers. We are edging closer and closer as the weeks go by. But if you're not subscribed, get hitting that subscribe button and add a Cola TV and help us hit that target ASAP. But as I said, this is the MUFC rumorator, and let's get stuck in to those transfer rumors. Now, sad to report, first up, we've got a little bit of bad news. Well, bad news for me, I know some of you guys didn't particularly want him at United, but I definitely was one of those that wanted him at Manchester United. And Jack Grealish has signed a new contract at Aston Villa, which will keep him at the club for another couple of years and it boosts his wages as well. Now, obviously, that one's a zero out of 10 for this summer. But like I do say, this summer, Jack Grealish is going to be destined, I feel, still for bigger things. Um, obviously, Aston Villa might be looking to invest this summer and, and get a team that they hope can push up the table, but they're not going to be competing with even the likes of, of Everton, Arsenal, Spurs for those Europa League spots, in my opinion. I don't think they're going to be competing at that level. So you have to say, is Jack Grealish at the right club? Nobody was really going to come in for him at the price that Villa wanted this summer. We knew that. Um, and therefore, he's staying at Aston Villa for at least another season. I know it's a long-term contract, but you have to always say at least another season because I'm hoping United come back in for him. Look, when when we when we signed Bruno Fernandes, kept Paul Pogba, and then signed Danny, Danny van der Beek, you know, the, the hope of that move happening diminished very quickly. Now, it's kind of good for United fans if you do want him because he's signed that new deal, which means no one else is going to be buying him this summer. And maybe it's a place where we can go in next season. Who knows, he might have, have, have an agreement with Villa or a release clause in there, which will allow him to join a Champions League club or a top four side um, next summer for a, for a certain amount, which United may seem uh, possible. So, Jack Grealish, the dream is over for this summer, but... I'm not counting us out of that one yet for the future. Now, something which has been on, off, on, off, off again, on again, all that stuff is Chris Smalling to AS Roma. Yesterday, we heard conflicting reports. Um, well, this week, we've heard conflicting reports coming from England that the move was close. He had, he had failed to show for his media duties um, at United, like with the squad. Um, you know, he, he had had a meeting with uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and advised Solskjaer that he wanted to leave and join Roma. Then we heard Roma were in for Marash Kumbula and they weren't going after Chris Smalling anymore. But we get latest reports now that Chris Smalling remains a priority for AS Roma manager Paolo Fonseca. Marash Kumbula does not exclude Smalling's return to Rome. The parties remain in negotiations. However, the deal has been complicated due to several different intermediaries being involved now. United probably feel like Roma are lowballing us on the Chris Smalling deal. You know, I think we can get £20 million. I think that's a fair price. And if we were looking to sign Smalling from Roma, what would they want from us? £40, £50 million? So when you look at it, you've got to say United are right to be standing their ground. But also, we've got to be looking to get this deal done. It's clear Chris Smalling doesn't have a future at Manchester United. We need to get him sold ASAP. It does feel like that a few of these sales that we're expecting to happen, Smalling, Jones, Rojo, Andreas Pereira maybe, even Diogo Delo, um, you know, it feels like we're waiting for these moves to happen before we're doing any further business in the market. And that's frustrating as well. Um, so whilst I believe, you know, we could get Smalling a move from Old Trafford um, up until right until the deadline, it's within our interest to get these deals done quickly. Now, I understand if Roma are lowballing us because we can probably get a bigger fee elsewhere from an English club, um, but Smalling wants to go to Roma, and that's obviously causing United a little bit of an issue. But if they're not going to pay up, they're not going to get him. But glad to hear those negotiations are still open, and I'm still giving Chris Smalling leaving Manchester United a 9 out of 10. Now, Jadon Sancho was previously a 9 out of 10 on the MUFC Rumorator. Has this changed this week? Well, the Jadon Sancho deal is in doubt as Manchester United begin to look at all Alternatives have been the, the widely reported um, stories this week in the last week by everyone in the British press. Dortmund 
have reiterated their stance that he's not for sale and he's not going anywhere and he's staying at the club. There's been a little bit of a Dortmund loving on socials with Dortmund praising Jadon Sancho loads and loads and loads and Sancho returning the favour. Now obviously he's a Dortmund player, he likes being there, it doesn't mean a move is off. But there's loads of this happening whilst there's this doubt about Manchester United being able to get the deal done. We're hearing about potential short-term alternatives, Ivan Perisic, Douglas Costa, Gareth Bale. And we'll speak about Gareth Bale a little bit later on. Um, but it does, you know, this one's been dragging on for a little bit now. I'm still confident it will happen. But as the days and the weeks go by and Dortmund begin to reiterate their stance consistently, you do begin to get a little bit more doubt about whether the deal is going to happen. And it'd be a mad one for me because I've almost counted Sancho as a player for us next season. So if he didn't sign it, it'd feel like we lost him on a free or something. Um, but my rumour rating on this one is still 7 out of 10. That's dropped from 8 or 9 um, down to a 7. Um, I'd, I'd give a 7.5, but we don't do half. So I'll go 7 out of 10 for this one now. I'm still confident he'll sign. But it looks like it's going to drag on. And we heard similar stories with wan with Maguire, um, you know, with, with Bruno Fernandes that right up until the last minute their clubs were insisting they weren't for sale um, and United weren't paying up what they wanted. Um, so let's hope this one carries on in a similar vein. A new player that was linked with Manchester United this week, a name that hadn't popped up at all this summer, was Euros Ratchet, the Valencia midfielder. Now, according to Hector Gomez from Spain, he had reported that United had a genuine interest in the Valencia midfielder, but hadn't yet made a 30 million euro bid despite rumours. Now, um, minutes later, or more like about an hour later, Hector Gomez then reported that Valencia had offered to renew his contract. And I think that said it all about how I felt about these rumours. 30 million euros, you can get Thiago Alcantara for that. We've just signed Donny van der Beek. Um, like, are we really going to be looking to spend in the midfield area before we, we strengthen anywhere else? Um, and you'd like to think, well, we don't have to work on one deal at a time or one position at a time. But you feel like with United, we'd be daft to be investing in the midfield again when we haven't got that right winger we need or the defenders we need. So I did feel a little bit hmm, not sure about this one. Um, obviously, Valencia have their their issues, and you know they might be looking to to cash in on him. But it does look like now he's been offered a deal, and maybe it was something that was put out there in order to get a new contract offer um, from the club, and it seemingly has worked. I'd give this one a one out of ten without that contract talk, anyway because I just don't feel it's going to happen. Now, another player linked to Manchester United from La Liga is Sergio Reguilon. Obviously spent his time at, on loan at Sevilla last season. Is a Real Madrid player and has consistently been linked with a move to Manchester United. Sevilla are seemingly out of the race for him now, having recently signed a left-back to play in that position where Sergio Reguilon would occupy. Now, there'd been a lot of talk about you know, the buyback clause being a major issue. Initially, we heard Real Madrid didn't want a deal without a buyback clause. Then we heard Sergio Reguilon didn't want a deal without a buyback clause, and that would have definitely caused issues. I think it would make United pull out of a deal for a player if you know they wanted to have a buyback clause to a to another club inserted into that deal. But now we hear from Spain that the deal is getting much, much closer. The buyback clause, whilst it is an issue, you know, it looks like it's going to be getting resolved and we could see a deal made without a buyback clause in there. You could maybe give them a first option if United were looking to sell themselves and if we have received a bid, you can give them a first right of refusal. But to give any buyback clause would be absolutely daft and I'm glad United are pushing back on that one. We could see a 30 million euro deal done for Sergio Reguilon in the next week or so. It'd be a good position to strengthen in. I do think we need a left back. You look at, you know, we got Shaw and Williams there at the moment. I think we're going to see Shaw potentially move over to where, uh, sorry, Williams move over to where Aaron wan is and help provide cover there. And then you could have Shaw and Reguilon fighting it out for the left. I imagine if we sign Reguilon, Diogo Delo's future would be over at Manchester United and be destined for a move as well. But there's been talk about us receiving potentially a 20 million fee for him. Um, so I imagine this one, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm believing the rumours on this one, but we can't count Sergio Reguilon as our player yet. I'd go 8 out of 10 on the rumour rater. Now, one of those alternatives to Jadon Sancho was Gareth Bale. Now, we hear Gareth Bale linked with Manchester United every single transfer window. In fact, even when the transfer window isn't open and we hear Gareth Bale is on the Manchester United radar after Jadon Sancho move hits an impasse. Now, we've obviously spoken about Jadon Sancho already and therefore everyone's been pushing the alternatives. Gareth Bale 
is that Real Madrid, who's not playing for them, hasn't played much football in the last couple of years. Um, he's spent some more time on the golf course than he has on the football pitch. And he's on big, big wages of 600 grand a week. But it's believed United could get him on 50% of those wages on a loan deal. Now, part of me thinks if you get the, the Gareth Bale that everybody knows and loves and is a top, top player, world-class player, in a short-term deal, on a loan deal, and you're paying just his wages, it's probably a good deal. But I fear this one turning into an Alexis Sanchez type situation. It's still a big chunk of wages, even if it is only half of his current wages um, at Real Madrid. It's still a massive, massive um, you know, fee on your salary bill. And um, are you getting that Gareth Bale that earned himself that fee, that salary? Are you getting that same Gareth Bale? Are you getting a Gareth Bale that isn't motivated, isn't really looking to, to, to be a success anymore in football because he's looked too happy to be sitting on a bench? And that's where I feel a little bit doubtful about this one. I feel doubtful about it anyway. He's been linked with United and Spurs. Um, and he's believed to be open to a move on loan to the Premier League. But I'd give this one a 4 out of 10. I can imagine if that Jadon Sancho one, that rating begins to drop as the weeks go by. Then maybe Gareth Bales will begin to climb. But at this moment in time... 4 out of 10 for Gareth Bale joining United. Anyway, guys, that has been the MUFC Rumor Rater. We've discussed Bale, Regilon, Rochic, or Ratchich, whatever his name is, Sancho, Smalling, and, of course, Jack Grealish. Get your thoughts in the comments below on all those Rumor Raters and get your Rumor Ratings in as well. And keep it locked to Adam McCullough TV. We're United Daily Live, live every single night at 10.30 p.m. and when there's breaking news as well. So make sure you're joining us for that. And there's daily content on Adam McCullough TV anyway. So... Make sure you are keeping it locked. For now, I've been Adam. You lot have been legends. Out of here.